Over the past few years, there is one piece of fishing equipment that has been gaining rapid popularity among ice fishermen, and that is the inline reel. The inline reel provides ice fishermen with a couple of distinct advantages over the spinning reel and that it gets your bait down quickly to the bottom and also gets it down without forming twists in the line. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to spool one of these inline reels. And if you do enjoy the video or learn something of value here, I'd appreciate it if you'd like, comment, or subscribe. And now let's go to the table and get this party started. All right, now you may be thinking to yourself, what the hell is all this stuff and what does it have to do with spooling an inline reel? Well, here on my channel, we're nerds and we don't do things the easiest, quickest way. We do things as precisely and perfectly as we can with performance in mind. So that's why I have all these materials. And I'll quickly go over each one and then we'll get right into spooling the reel. So firstly, of course, you're going to need your inline fishing reel. And next you're going to need some fishing line and you have the same three choices that you have with any other type of reel. You have your braid, your monofilament and your fluorocarbon. But regardless of what line you're choosing to spool your reel with, I'm going to suggest that you choose a line that is specifically formulated for ice fishing. These lines will be labeled as such. It will say ice braid or ice monofilament or ice fluorocarbon right there on the packaging. And these lines have some extra hydrophobic properties, which means they repel water and that protects the line from freezing. And now if you've chosen to spool your inline reel with braid, you're going to need some electrical tape and we're going to use that as backing. Braided line is slick and if you tie it directly to that spool without applying some backing first, it will slip and slide around the spool during the spooling process and it could even slip and slide around the spool when you set the hook or when you're fighting a fish, which would be another huge problem. And with our backing, we're also going to need to trim that down to fit the surface of our spool. So with that, I also have a ruler here. This is just a six inch straight ruler and an X-Acto knife. If you don't have an X-Acto knife like this one, you can use any sharp razor blade and that's just so that we can precisely cut our electrical tape. I've also got a calculator handy and that's just so that we can calculate the circumference of that spool so we can cut our electrical tape to fit it. And guys, I've shown this in two other videos now for spooling a bait caster and for spooling a spinning reel, but I can't recommend it enough. You gotta have one of these line spooling devices. Unless you can afford to buy one of those commercial line spoolers that they use at the big tackle shops, this is the best at home option for spooling up reels, especially for spinning reels. Other tutorials are gonna suggest the old pencil through the shoe box technique, and then you have to manually apply the tension with your fingers. But if you have one of these devices, it applies that tension for you with these two arms. Now this is the attachment version of the PC Fun line spooler. There is actually a standalone version that would be better in the specific case of spooling up these inline reels, because this is actually too big to attach to an ice fishing rod. So because I have this version, off camera I have a seven foot spinning rod that I'm going to be attaching my inline reel to, and that's just a minor inconvenience. So in the description, I'm going to link you guys to the standalone version of this line spooler. And if I could go back in time, that's the one I would purchase. It's just a little bit more convenient. So once again, guys, I purchased this myself. I'm not sponsored. This is just a great product and you need one of these at home for spooling up your reels. So now that we have all our materials assembled, we can go ahead and apply our backing to the reel. So the first thing we wanna do is remove our spool from the reel. And to do that, there's usually a cap here that screws on and we just wanna loosen that up. And once that is all the way loosened up, we can simply pop our spool off of that reel. And the next thing we wanna do is to measure the width of the spool's interior surface that the line is gonna be resting on. And we also wanna take a measurement of the spool circumference and not the circumference of the entire spool, but of that interior surface that the braid is going to be resting on. So our piece of electrical tape backing needs to be a quarter inch wide, and the diameter of our spool is 1.9 inches. And the formula for circumference of a circle is pi times diameter, so we wanna take pi, which is 3.1416 times 1.9 inches, and we have 5.969 inches. So I'm gonna cut a piece of electrical tape that is six inches long and a quarter inch wide. I'm gonna do a little bit longer than what is suggested here, the six inches, just to be safe. I can always trim a little bit off at the end. So I'm going to lay out a piece of electrical tape on my cutting board here. And using my X-Acto knife, I'm gonna trim that to exactly six inches in length, just like that. Next, I'm going to mark my quarter inch spot on both sides of the electrical tape. Then I'll line my ruler up with those two marks and I'll go ahead and cut all the way down that tape. 
Then I'll go ahead and peel off my electrical tape backing and now we can apply it to the surface of our spool. All right, now we have a nice even layer of backing and I used my scissors so that I could get down there in that small space. My fingers just won't fit in there to smooth it out, but whatever tool you guys can find that you can lay flat and kind of smooth that out, just make sure it's nice and flat against that spool. And now that we've applied our backing, we can go ahead and tie on our braided line. So with an inline reel, the line guide is located right here on the interior side of the reel on the same side as the reel seat. And when we press the free fall trigger here to release the spool, it will rotate in the clockwise direction and our line will go around and come up through that guide and then through the guides on our rod, allowing our bait to drop down to the bottom. And when we retrieve our line, it will come back through that guide and spool onto the reel in the counterclockwise direction. This is essentially the opposite of how a bait caster reel functions. And the important thing here is that our line comes off of our line spool and onto the spool of our reel in the same direction. So we're going to be pulling the line off of our line spool and rotating it in the counterclockwise direction and spooling it onto our inline reel also in the counterclockwise direction. It is even more important with the ice fishing lines that you spool it onto your reel in the same direction that it comes off the line spool because these lines have additional memory because of those coatings that are applied for the extra hydrophobic properties. These lines, including the braided lines, can have additional memory because of those hydrophobic materials, fibers, and coatings that make the line more rigid. And now we're ready to tie our line onto the spool of our inline reel so that we can go ahead and start spooling it on. And as a reminder, if you're using monofilament or fluorocarbon line, this is step one because you don't need to apply that backing. Monofilament and fluorocarbon lines have a tackiness to them that helps it adhere to the surface of that spool. And so in those cases, the backing isn't necessary. So the first thing we wanna do is to line up our spools so that the fishing line is coming off of the line spool in the same direction that it's going on to the inline reel. Once we've done that, I'm going to lay my line spool on the table so that the side facing me is facing up. And once again, I'm going to loosen and remove my spool from the reel. And once that's removed, I'm going to lay this spool on the opposite side, also facing up. Now this is a left hand retrieve reel, but if you have a right hand retrieve reel, it will just be like this but the exact opposite. Now from our line spool over here, I'm gonna let out about a couple feet of line, and then I'm going to feed the tag end of my line down through the line guide of that reel. You absolutely cannot forget this step. If you forget this step, you're going to have to start all over. And after feeding a couple feet of line through our guide, we're going to wrap it around in a loop around our spool, just like that. And now we're going to tie an inverted uni knot. And the inverted uni knot is hands down the best knot that you can use to tie your line to the spool of any reel. And I'll quickly walk you through the steps, but if you need a tutorial that's even easier to follow for the inverted uni knot, I'll put a link to it uh, right here. So once our loop is formed, we just want to pinch it together where our tag end is crossing the main line. And then using our tag end, we're going to form another smaller loop on the interior of that larger loop. And we're also going to pinch that together with our other two lines. And from here on out, it's basically a standard uni knot. We're going to take our tag end here and perform some wraps around the lines that form our big loop and our small loop. And for the purposes of this knot, five wraps is always sufficient. After we perform those wraps, we're ready to go ahead and cinch that part of the knot down. And once the uni knot is cinched down, we can now go ahead and place that loop around our spool. And then we can pull our main line to cinch that knot down all the way to the surface of that spool. When the knot gets close to the spool, you can work it back and forth while pulling to make sure you get it extra tight. Now, as you guys can see, that line is tied down snugly to that spool and now we can go ahead and trim our tag end close to that knot. And now we can pull our line back through the guide until our spool gets to the reel and then reattach our spool to the reel. And now we're ready to use our line spooler to go ahead and spool this line completely onto the reel. 
All right, guys, we are now ready to perform what is certainly the easiest part of the entire process. And once again, I'm gonna recommend that you guys try out the standalone version of the line spooler, but since I have the attachment version, I've got my inline reel seated on one of my spinning rods because that attachment simply won't fit on one of these smaller ice fishing rods. But as you can see here, I've got my line spooler attached securely to my spinning rod, and then I've got my spool of line between these two arms here, and I've used this knob here to tighten the tension down. That's what's gonna allow us to apply that tension to our line and spool it tightly onto our reel. And the most important part here is to make sure that we have our line coming off of our line spool from your point of view counterclockwise and going on to the inline reel in the same direction also counterclockwise. One more thing I should mention here is that there is a pin on the line spooler that when pulled allows that line spooler to rotate freely. And that is strictly for spinning reels, so we wanna make sure that pin is in place and that the line spooler is in the locked position. And now that we have everything set up correctly and we have some nice tension being applied to the line, it's time to go ahead and spool it on. And what we're gonna do is spool it until the line is about an eighth of an inch away from the outer edge of that spool. You'll notice as I'm spooling the line on, I'm just using my finger to guide that line from side to side, and that's just gonna help it spool on a little bit more evenly. And there we have it. Our line is spooled on nice and evenly. And that's gonna do it for today's video, and I hope you guys did find it helpful. As a reminder, I'll put a link in the description to my recommended line spooler, as well as to this rod and reel combo you guys saw in the video today. This is the Widowmaker and the Freefall Carbon by 13 Fishing. And we spooled it up today with some 20 pound braid because I'm gonna be using this combo to target big mama lake trout, big pike, and eventually some musky as well. And if you're interested in what's coming next on the channel, I just spent all of my Christmas money on jig and fly tying materials and those deliver very soon. And I'm gonna be tying some jig and fly patterns that YouTube has never seen before. If that's your cup of tea, consider subscribing because it's gonna be awesome. Thanks for watching, bye.